as you might be aware that Canada is going to have another federal elections in just one week time, a lot of you are worried about what would be its impact on the immigration. What if the Liberals win? What if the Conservatives come into power? Many of us know about the Liberal government because we have seen them function in the last few years and generally people think that um, Liberal are pro-immigration while Conservatives are anti-immigration. So what if the Conservatives come into power? Will they stop the Express Entry program? Will they negatively impact the Canadian immigration? And what about the other political parties? So in this video, we are going to talk in depth about the effect of the elections on all of those different immigration points. So if you're interested, stay tuned. I quickly want to remind you of subscribing to the new channel Dreamers Abroad. That's the new Hindi vlogging channel and we are uploading some really fun content over there. Before we start discussing about the effect of elections on the immigration, let's quickly try to understand which all political parties are there in Canada. Not many people might be aware about it. Uh, number one, we have the Liberal Party of Canada, which is being led by Justin Trudeau, who is the current Prime Minister. Then we have the Conservative Party of Canada, which is currently the main opposition and is led by Erin O'Toole. Then we have the New Democratic Party, which is led by Jagmeet Singh, who's getting very famous these days. NDP is actually part of the coalition government. In the 2019 elections, Liberals could not score full majority. So uh, it was a coalition government with NDP. Then we have Bloc Cubicoy. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly because uh, it's in French. It's a federal party, but based out of Quebec and it thrives on Quebec nationalism. So it's quite different. Then after that, we have Green Party of Canada and also People's Party of Canada. Both of these parties did not score well in the last election. So we won't talk much about them. We will primarily talk about the four parties, the Liberals, the Conservatives, NDP and Bloc Québécois. And by the way, if you want to get a little idea of who is leading in these elections, advanced polling has already started and it seems that Conservatives and uh, Liberals are going head to head. It's a very tough competition. Sometimes Liberals lead and sometimes Conservatives lead. So those are going to be very interesting election results this time. But okay, let's talk about uh, the immigration, the impact of these elections. So starting with the Liberals, what do they actually think of immigration? So generally, Liberals are thought of as someone who are pro-immigration who support immigration and they've also done great work since 2015 when Justin Trudeau became the Prime Minister leading the Liberal government. They've made some interesting changes in the express entry system. They've also tried to modernize the system by moving from paper applications to online applications. Many of the applications including the citizenship just recently, just last month, uh, can be applied through an online system nowadays. They've tried to experiment with the parents and grandparents uh, sponsorship program. Earlier, it was uh, the first come first serve basis, which was not quite easy for many people. It was contradictory and they introduced the lottery system, which again is opposed by many people, but it's their way of uh, functioning. And of course, they regularly introduced the three year plans where they regularly increase the immigration target and now it is 1.2 million for three years. So it won't be wrong to say that liberals definitely support immigration, but there are few points where they have been lacking, especially after the COVID. They haven't been able to handle this COVID pandemic in the world of immigration quite well because there have been tons of backlogs. However, according to the new strategy, they haven't conducted the all program draws this year, at least until now. But they have definitely taken a couple of bold steps to transform the temporary residents to permanent residents. So that definitely gives you an idea of how liberals think of immigration. But let's see what do they actually have to promise if they actually get re-elected. Let's check out their manifesto. They've said that if liberals get re-elected, then they will reform the economic immigration programs to expand pathways to permanent residency for temporary foreign workers and former international students through the express entry point system. 
Then the second point is about refugees and the third point is about the temporary foreign workers. So it says that they would establish a trusted employer system to streamline application process for Canadian companies hiring temporary foreign workers to fill labor shortages that cannot be filled by Canadian workers. And something about the Global Talent Stream program. Then after that, they once again talk about all those people who are able to communicate in French, not just in Quebec, but outside of Quebec as well. Then they've also addressed the points of family reunification and reducing processing times. This is probably one of the most pain points at this point of time. So they have said that if re-elected, the Liberal government will reduce the processing times that have been impacted by COVID-19 to under 12 months. Introduce electronic applications for family reunification. This has been pending for quite a long time now. And then also implement a program to issue visas to spouses and children abroad while they wait for the processing of their permanent residency application so that families can be together soon. So they've addressed both of these points in their manifesto. So that is what you can expect from the Liberal government if they get re-elected. Okay, now when you know that what Liberal government has done so far and what they plan to do if they get re-elected, now let's talk about the Conservatives. There are high chances that Conservatives might also come into power. So if they get re-elected, what would be the picture of Canadian immigration for the next few years? Generally, Conservatives have that image that they are anti-immigration or if that is a strong word, I should say, they're not very supportive of immigration. I don't know the reason why. It may be because of uh, some of the statements given by Conservative leaders in the past. Many people think that if Conservatives come into power, then they would negatively impact the Canadian immigration in a sense that they would actually reduce the quota of uh, immigrants those are actually planned by the Canadian uh, Liberal government so far. Many think that they might end the express entry system. I have read many posts about it in the uh, Facebook groups and people talking about it. But guys, many of you might not know that the government that actually introduced the express entry system was the Conservatives government. If you remember, the express entry system started in the start of 2015 and that time there was a Conservative government the Liberal government, Justin Trudeau, actually became the Prime Minister towards the end of 2015. So all the planning, the point system, everything that has gone into the uh, planning of Express Entry program was actually planned by the uh, Conservatives. So don't worry too much about it. Express Entry is not going to end for sure. Uh, but let's see what do they have to promise if they get elected this time. They are certainly hitting some of the pain areas and through their manifesto it actually seems that they are quite supportive of immigration and they want to improve and fill the loopholes in the current immigration system. So let's quickly check out their manifesto now. Anyways, let's see what are their plans for immigration. First of all, they are directly hitting the backlogs. I actually like a point that they've mentioned here. Canada's conservatives will tackle administrative backlogs by creating an efficiency mechanism where those waiting for their application to be reviewed can pay a fee for expedited processing and through the money that they will actually get through those applications they will actually use that to hire and train more staff i think it's a great point and i'm sure many people would actually be interested to pay some extra amount of money in order to get their application processed quicker than how usually it is especially in these times when people have been waiting for their pprs for more than a year i am sure many people would be happy to pay an upfront fee for expedited processing then they've talked about fixing a broken visitor visa system they've addressed the fact that many visitor visas get arbitrary denial and people are not able to attend important family functions in Canada. So they say that they would be exploring mechanisms to pursue a more generous and fairer visa systems for visitors if they come into power and if that happens, that would be really nice. Now they've also talked about modernizing the current immigration system by the use of technology and a point that is mentioned here, I found it very interesting. They've said that currently if a person makes an error in the application, then the application gets rejected and the person is required to resubmit the application entirely but if they come into power they would let applicants correct simple and honest mistakes in an application within a set amount of time. Then they have also talked about launching a credential recognition task force. They want this task force to study the credential pre-qualification and then they have addressed the family reunification as well. Earlier the parents and grandparents 
sponsorship program was on the first come first served basis but but liberal government actually changed it to lottery system but conservative seems to be in support of the first come and first served principle then they are also talking about some of the improvements in the super visas and then they also talked about the pathways to permanence for international students and the foreign temporary workers they have suggested that they would actually create new pathways for permanence for those already living and working in canada so all in all this sounds to be a very good plan as such i do not find it anyhow anti immigration if you want an example of something what is anti immigration you should definitely check out the manifesto of the people's party of canada i won't go through it but just want to show you quick points they have clearly said here that if they win they would substantially lower the total number of immigrants and refugees in canada to about in half or even more than that they would limit the number of immigrants accepted under the family reunification program and also the temporary foreign workers basically this is what is anti immigration but i don't think that people's party of canada is going to be of any significance because in the last elections they did not win even a single seat so i am not sure who actually takes them seriously and i also won't waste time discussing about their plans and guys just a quick disclaimer neither i have any connection nor i support any of these political parties because to be quite frank i don't have in depth knowledge of canadian politics as such but yes i did this research just to make this video just to help you guys understand what would be the scenario of the canadian immigration after the elections whichever party actually wins okay so talking about the other parties talking about bloc quebecois it is basically a federal party but based out of quebec and talks about quebec nationalism i tried actually to find what they have to say about canadian immigration but i could not find much on the internet they mostly talk about quebec what plans quebec might have for their immigration but not about canada as a whole so i would skip that part for this video and talk about ndp new democratic party and is a part of current coalition government but have been opposing trudeau and the policies of the liberal government quite often so they are also standing as a separate party but they may be a part of the government so it's very important to know about their thinking their thoughts on immigration as well so let's check out their manifesto now so let's see what ndp has to say about immigration you specifically mentioned a few points about family reunification and backlog because those are probably the most weakest links in the canadian immigration system right now they also don't seem to like the lottery system in the parent and grandparent sponsorship programs and they say that they will end the unfair cap on applications to sponsor parents and grandparents and they're also hitting on the backlogs that are keeping families apart very interesting point that they've mentioned here is about the unscrupulous immigration consultants ensuring that the immigration industry is regulated by the government and apart from that they haven't mentioned any detailed plan about how they actually want to do all of what they're claiming to do but because of the image that jagmeet singh actually holds he comes from an indian immigrant family so generally ndp has an image to be quite supportive of immigration and guys just another quick info NDP was a part of the coalition government but they were not in majority it's just the liberal party and the conservative party who have uh, got majority uh, votes and majority seats in the elections so they have been forming the governments until now so probably this time as well it would be a tough competition between liberals and the conservatives so whichever party wins i really hope that you have an idea now that what would be the picture of the canadian immigration going forward because both the parties have actually promised quite a lot in their manifestos so whichever party actually wins i really hope that they actually do what they've promised in their manifesto so the canadian immigration would have a much better shape in the near future as well and in a nutshell there's no need to worry at all i don't see any changes coming in the canadian immigration at least in the next few months let's say that the new government is formed in uh, the first week of october or somewhere around that they would take some time to settle down and then there will be christmas by the time they actually come back 
they will try and implement their plans and that will also take time so i don't see any immediate changes coming into express entry or any other immigration program so you don't have to worry about it but whatever happens i'll definitely update you and whoever wins the election i'll definitely try to make a video uh, to let you know about that as well so if you actually want quick updates and important videos like these so do not forget to click the subscribe button on this channel please put your comments down in the comment section below and if you really like the video then click the thumbs up button and share it with your friends so that they can also get to know about it thanks a lot for watching this video guys